today I, I want to talk about um, something that's kind of interesting in Gen 9. Uh, in previous generations, we've never had hazards be all that viable in VGC. You might see like one weird user at your local like throw stealth rocks on a Pokemon, uh, but it's never really gotten anyone terribly far. Uh, that being said, in Generation 9, we have a few Pokemon that can now passively set up hazards with Glamora having Toxic Debris, meaning that if it gets a physical attack uh, targeted onto it, it'll set up Toxic Spikes. Levor and Hisuian uh, Samurott, when they return in the DLC, have moves that set up Stealth Rocks and Cesus Edge uh, will set up the um, spikes, respectively. So, yeah, I want to talk about that, but obviously, you know, we, we are like a, a mid-tier player. We have to get a high-tier, number one ranked North America. Uh, what are the other things you say, Joe? Number one ranked North America, uh, X9 uh, Corporation Chairman. X9 Academy, yeah, blah, X9 blah, Academy, blah. sign up for coaching. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, you grow uh, bigger when you sign up. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we got Joe on the channel. It's been a minute since we've actually had you on the channel, which is weird. Um, but no, we're, What's up, we're, fellas? we're just, you know, we're just going to talk about uh, what might happen when these things become legal in VGC. It's all speculation, to be honest. But um, generally speaking, you can kind of tell where things head just by what Pokemon are legal. Like, you know, when, when we like saw like the stats of the Pokemon that were legal, we could like tell certain things like, oh, Annihilate's gonna be good. Well, actually, I said Annihilate would be good. Joe said Annihilate would be mid. I got the DMs to prove it, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, but, well, I only thought about like, see, I didn't realize how good like its HP stat was. You know yeah. what I mean? And then you see this thing like click bulk up a few times. It doesn't oh die to anything. You're Dude, like, mm, well, you know. <laughs> Grimstar or Annihilate makes me want to like explode. But no, we're we're gonna talk about hazards today. You know, Joe's gonna be linked down below if you guys enjoyed this. Of course, subscribe to the channel like the video, turn on notifications, and, and sub to Joe. Joe, you're almost at like 10K, aren't you? Mm, I'm at uh, 12K now. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, the new game came out, so you like definitely blew up from that. All right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. look, it's, that's how you know it's been a minute. 20K yeah. next. Yeah, that's get you out of 20K. All right, let's talk about this. So I we want to just start off with Glamora because it's like the only one that's legal. And then like Cleavor and Samurai we'll talk about like in a minute, but uh, yeah, yeah. Gl Glamora has like, it, it feels like stat wise, it's like a mini Nihiligo. It's got like high special attack, rock and poison typing. Hold up, oh. bro. How you just say, how, how, how did you just say that name? It's not illegal, bro. What do you I mean? Know. <laughs> look, look, dude, they're going to comment. <laughs> look, look, it's free comments. It's free comments. Okay. All right. Oh my God. So, so Glamora is like a mini, um, a mini Nickelback. Uh, so it's got 130 special attack, 86 uh, speed. It's like bulk is okay, but the typing's god awful. Like, I think that the only way you ever get off like any kind of like toxic debris with this is if you're just running like Focus Sash and you like tank an Earthquake. And then from then on, you you like never run bulk. You like always run like max max, don't you? Yeah, well, so actually I do have an interesting fact. So there was an Italian local tournament in Milan and the i believe the second place or the first place team or one of the teams in like higher part of top cut did actually have a glamora and it was a paired with dondozo and tatsugiri and the whole point of it was so that you could always win the dondozo mirror because you would uh, like proc the toxic debris mm -hmm. so when the opposing dondozo came on the field if they weren't like the terra steel like you know rest set they would just lose because they would always get like out damaged by the other dondozo um yeah. and basically they would play to get up like the toxic debris early in the game so that the dundozo could stall at the end of the game with the uh rest and like uh sleep talk stuff i'm pretty sure yo that's 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 a crazy strat you you could also just run a skeleton uh yeah yeah <laughs> I, that, too right <laughs> like that's 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 like the the biggest like roundabout way of winning the dondozo mirror but i i respect it like if you can get like use out of toxic debris like yeah go for it um Something I actually just recorded like a showdown live that won't go up until after this video. But like me and Main and uh and Shiraiu tried using Stealth Rock Toxic Debris Glamora and it wasn't good. Like it, it just straight up isn't good. But I feel like if you like don't lean into hazards too much and just run like the, the toxic debris as a passive thing, it's not terrible. But like Amoongus is running around, it's like one of the highest used Pokemon right now, at least on showdown. So like it in Amoongus doesn't stay still. Like it switches out and it switches in. It's never gonna stay in the field. So like it feels like the, the spikes never stay up. I almost feel like maybe the best way to run this thing would even be like assault vest with like the four coverage moves. I mean that's at I think one an early on Japanese tournament, like before like we had even the Paradox Pokemon like banned. And um it was used with like fair giraffe and like torkoal or something like that. I think it was running like Earth Power, Sludge Bomb, Power Gem, and Energy Ball, and it was Terra Grass. 
And Terra Grass is like that type that like perfectly complements Rock Poison because you have the ground weakness, you have the, uh, you know, psychic weakness turns into neutral, but you also have like some of the other weaknesses that just are pretty much covered by grass and like vice versa, right? Anything that grass is weak to, like rock poison is not getting hit Yeah, by. and it makes it so it's so. really easy to get the debris off because you're gonna tank like the earthquake from Chomp and then you're just gonna like get it off like every single time. Um, that also gets rid of like the golden go weakness. And if you run like a salt vest, like you're just tanking the, the make it rain pretty well at that point. So yeah, I think that's actually like not a bad way to run it. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean like that was that's probably like the most like standard application of it i think i've seen mm -hmm. i think that if you're running like the sash set like that's potentially doable but the only thing like big drawback is like it speeds that so like it to be fair though it speeds here like it does outspeed goldengo at like um you know at like max speed so yeah, what's you goldengo, do get 84. that kind of benefit yeah yeah it's a uh, 80 five or 84 it's like i think you're like one or two uh speed points above it if you're max but like also assault vest is just a pretty good set because actually it, you know bulky grass types are kind of hard to remove in this format unless you have like a strong fire type which there aren't too many no no no, no 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 joe you're wrong it's not bulky grass types that are hard to remove it's bulky fire types pretending to be grass types that are hard to remove let's be honest with the <laughs> audience here because the best grass types are fire types right now that's just i hate that, that is true. <laughs> That's true. Dude, I mean, it's, it's two gens in a row that this has happened where grass types aren't the best grass types. Yep. I think, too, that, like, it, it's interesting, too, because then it creates the argument of, like, is it actually a certain type that's, like, good or is it just specifically because of the Pokemon? You know what I mean? Because Terra's, like, like that. Yeah. Instead of it being, you know, just, like, if something's just a certain type, it's it's good. Like, that's not how it works anymore. Yeah. You know? and, and, I mean, like, Terra kind of fixes other Pokemon. It's not... Like, yeah, like, if you use it offensive, this is a whole different discussion, but, like, this, it's, it's, like, if you use it offensively, then it's still, like, rich get richer stuff with, like, you know, Terra Flying Landorus, and now you have, like, um, you know, uh, what's it called? Blast. Yeah, Adaptability, uh, Terra Blast Flying. But even, like, with, like, other Pokemon, like, I don't think Glamora would see usage if you couldn't Terra it. Like, this allows you to, like, actually, like, get something out of it. Um, and I've seen yeah. it with a few Pokemon, but that, that's, that's a whole different discussion, so, yeah. I mean, I think... No, Absolutely. I think we totally cover Glamora. Like that's it's it's a mid tier Pokemon, and you can probably find a use for it. Is like the whole gist of it. And the spikes are only good because they're like passive. Otherwise, you would yeah. never, never, never run toxic spikes. Uh, Basically, like if you if you want to run Glamora, it's you it's something you can run. It's not necessarily like top tier, but you can probably get a, get away with it on like a team or two if it's in the yeah. right position. Uh, I think. You know, let's move on to the Hisuian mons that have the the passive attacks, which I think is better than it's it's objectively better than Toxic Debris. Oh, way uh, better, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so Hisuian Samurott and Cleaver. I think we're gonna talk about Samurott first because I think Cleaver is actually the best user of of like hazards. Um, but Hisuian Samurott has like Water Dark, which is actually like a really really good typing, at least offensively. It covers like a decent amount of things, um, and it has Sharpness. Actually, both of these guys have Sharpness. Uh, which increases the power of slicing attacks by 50%. So Ceaseless Edge is 65 base power, 90 accuracy, which is kind of not great, but it's like whatever. Um, and it sets a layer of spikes every time you use it. But now because it's 65 times 1.5, a good way to think about it is it's like the same power as knockoff. So every turn you're having like a full power knockoff that sets up uh, spikes. Uh, and also like, I guess like if we're, if we're gonna talk about like hazards, we have to talk about like the Pokemon that they're attached to because no one's gonna run spikes normally. So, Hisuian course, Samurott, yeah. right? Like, this Pokemon actually feels kind of cracked. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What yeah, do you, no, what, I what think, think that, like, I think the Seasless Edge is really interesting because you do get the, obviously, like, a strong stab move that you can kind of take advantage of to do damage. I think the main thing that might hold Samurott back, specifically, in comparison to Cleaver, is, like, Cleaver is kind of more min-max in its stats to where, like, you would take advantage of it on, like, a slower team, right? Yeah. But when you consider, like, or not even necessarily, like, a slower team, it depends, but you can do a lot more with it. Whereas, like, Samurott still has the issues that its, like, predecessor has of, like, yo, I'm still kind of frail and, like, I have a awkward amount of investment in my other stat that I'm never using, my other offensive stat that I'm never using, where yeah. I would have appreciated it in bulk, you know what I mean? Um, I think it is, like, a little bit frail, and that's definitely going to be an issue for it in comparison. Like, I think they literally just inverted the attack and uh, special attack from the original Samurott. Doesn't that fix sure a few that. things, though? Because, like, Samurott, like, having 100 attack was really bad because it's, it's, like, a better move pool was, like, its its physical attacks. Like, it had Liquidation, it had Sacred Sword, it had Aqua Jet, but, like, it wanted to run special. And especially because, like, Intimidate was a lot better uh, previous to Gen 9. 
Like, it couldn't really get anything done because it was Intimidate food, it had a low attack stat, and it was just like, it, it just felt like all of its moves bounced off of things. I feel like Hisui and Samurott showed up at just the right time where like, Intimidate isn't as good. It's still good, right? But it's not like as good. Um, and just like the passive of, oh, well now my Sacred Sword basically has a stab boost on it. Uh, my water move is stronger than Liquidation because Liquidation was the old best water move on, on Samurott. 85 base mm -hmm. power. Now, Aqua Cutter, what is that? That's uh, 35. That's a 105 base power and it has a high crit ratio. Like yeah, this it's thing? almost like a... It, it's interesting too because like I'm sure, don't, don't get me wrong, like I'm sure these Pokemon will probably at least be decent because... The thing is, is like even Gallade has carved out like a small niche in this format, you know, just because of sharpness alone, like uh, amplifying its damage so much. Yeah. So like I could definitely see like Samurott being good. My only like main thing would be like you'd probably need a really good Terra to support it. Even if it turned into like a Terra fighting type, I could potentially see the potential in that because like you kind of invert a lot of your weaknesses. You do carry over your fairy weakness, but it does give you a stronger sacred sword yeah. that you can run. So, you know, there's some trade-offs there, but I think it would be whatever it's using as a Terra type, it'd have to be like focused on its offense rather than its defense. Oh, 100%. Like you wouldn't be able to get away with like playing this thing passively. You just kind of have to like hammer at the things in front of you. Um, yeah, like what, what does the max speed to hit even look like? Max uh, speed I think to it hit. outspeeds Goldengo, doesn't it? It's the same speed tier as Sarah Ledge. It's the exact same speed. So yeah, it outspeeds by one speed. So actually, no, like you can Ceaseless Edge into like Goldengo and that's like basically hitting it with a knockoff like that is a strong move yeah. and and if you run av like you're you, not only do you resist um what's it called make it rain but like with the av even though you have like 65 base special defense like you're going to be able to eat that up just fine yeah, i think even life orb would kind of go crazy with it if you're able to like amplify its damage that much because uh realistically with such a wide amount of like coverage if you have like life orb too like you're gonna be doing a lot of damage into opponents and that's kind of hard to react to even yeah. if it was just like a terra water um, you know, Samurott, like, you're gonna be doing a lot of damage with Aqua Cutter, I think. Oh, yeah. And, um, and like, think about it. Like, the Golden Go, even if it, like, wants to get rid of that Dark Weakness and turn, like, Terra Steel and boost the damage, like, if they do that prior to, like, the Samurott hitting the field, you still have Sacred Swords. So this is actually, like, really decent in the Golden Go teams, if we're being real. Yeah, the only problem that has is, like, it's a little, uh, it can be a little bit frail. Like, yeah. its special defense is a little bit kind of skeptical like i'd be skeptical about that i do think like though in the end like i think the spikes that samurai offers from seasless edge because obviously we are talking about like the hazards of it yeah um i think like that's more of like a bonus rather than like an actual fix fixated like point that you would focus on i guess yeah um, like for the for using samurai like you'd use it because of sharpness and damage and then like that'd just be bonus that you yeah. can set spikes and even then it'd be a toss-up if you want knockoff or ceaseless edge because they're the same exact power but knockoff is more consistent in the damage and sometimes you just want to remove items like i don't know if there's ever going to be like a decent evil light user this generation like let's say like porygon 2 comes back like yeah you're gonna knock off instead of ceaseless edge it's just like always gonna be better um and something that i pointed out before we hit the record button actually to joe was like it intimidates a lot worse so like even though like arcanine is in the game and like gyarados is in the game this isn't like a pivot heavy. it isn't like as pivot heavy as like gen 8 was or even gen 7 um like the the biggest pivot pokemon i see right now is like i don't know meowskarata u-turn and like parting shot grim snarl like there's not much beyond that i do have a theory on that though I think that the reason why we don't have as much Intimidate is because there is enough. So like, think about it like this, right? Like a lot of good Pokemon in this format right now are special attackers or Pokemon with abilities that like don't get affected by yeah. Intimidate, right? But like, once you add Paradoxes back and you add like that, like the general Pokemon from those kind of areas, like back into the game, like Intimidate's actually good again. Yeah, no, yeah, like, and Intimidate's also actually good again. Intimidate's better in open team sheet than it is in closed team sheet because like if you're facing down like a chomp right like right now on ladder a lot of them are running clear amulet because it's just like safe into like intimidate mons but it's going to do this weird thing where like oh intimidate mons go down more more like chomp users are like mm, maybe i'll run like life or maybe i'll run like this item and then it's like oh well now they're not running clear amulet i'm going to run intimidate in an open team sheet you always know so like if you have like a gyarados on your team and you see a chomp with like no no clear amulet it's like yeah there's no reason not to bring it now so i don't know it's going to be a weird thing yeah, I think too though, uh, what what's probably gonna be the name of the game with uh, San Diego even and Liverpool regionals, which are like the first two regionals we'll be playing, is literally like jumping between using amulet on your physical attackers and not, 
because like no one's running intimidate but then maybe people bring intimidate because they know that like okay people aren't running amulet anymore because there's yeah. no intimidate you know yeah um so that's what i'm really interested to see the jump between you know um whether people will try and bring intimidate basically saying like yo there's not gonna be any like clear amulet now because no one wants it you know honestly um, i think that like people are still gonna run amulet because like i don't know the thing with open team sheets is your items like covert cloak and like uh clear amulet they become less like i'm never going to get intimidated and more like preventative measures you know like oh well now my opponent won't want to bring like the arcanine because it's like doing worse into like the chomp magic like that sort of thing manipulate it's, like team preview is what you mean yeah like you can you can manipulate on team preview like something i tweeted out like a joke the other day but it was kind of serious was like oh yo if you run annihilate it's optimal not to run uh it's optimal not to run clear emulate garchomp because you can force them to give you a, a defiant boost because they're so excited like, I don't know. It, it was it yeah. was like a joke, but it was also kind of true. Yeah, no, it definitely is. I mean, I, I think too, uh, that's gonna be like really interesting to see. Also, too, you know what's interesting with Cleaver for me out of like all these three? Yeah. Is like it actually has like a really crazy high attack stat, um, which is, is really nasty. usable. And it's the same like, speed tiers as Samurai, like so it's still yeah. faster than Golden. And that's the thing, like, I don't even know if you need bulk on this kind of thing, because, like, it's just such a nuke anyways, that, like, you would just be focused on the damage. And, like, you like, sash well, it too, or, like, life orb it. That's what I'm thinking. Like, you just sash it, or, like, you do that. And, like, it's speed tier. It still outspeeds Goldingo, which is really funny. Um, Night Slash probably blows it up, too. Life orb, yeah. Night Slash. No, for sure. Like, it does, it does a bunch of damage, right? And I think the thing is, too, is, like, I think Stone Axe is probably the best of like the hazard moves because Stealth Rocks is just such a good hazard, but like you don't want to waste a turn in VGC setting it up. But like if you have a move that just does that while you're attacking, like, yeah, that's really good. You know, um, that's actually like pretty good like value you get out of a turn where you're dealing damage with a sharpness boosted like rock move that you have stab with. And even if you're Terra Rock even, that could like make it even better yeah and then on top of that you also set up rocks like it's it's pretty good yeah and like and it's the most consistent hazard too because like the issue with samurott's like spikes and glamora's uh toxic spikes is like for one both both of them like flying types are immune to so like you know you're not going to catch like i don't know with like evil light Merkur running around because they're mostly evil light over sash right now like if you get like a little bit of damage it actually knocks in range of like ko's of a lot of moves so if a Merkur comes in on rocks like that's like huge um or like like we said earlier like a Moongus like removes the toxic spikes all the time because it's always pivoting so at least with cleaver like if you're gonna get rid of them or ignore them you have to commit to something and no one's ever gonna run defog or rapid spin in this format so it's like if, if you see a cleaver you're just playing with rocks on your field you're just dealing with it yep and i think too like it's funny because like i think if vgc um had like good good rock setter it would probably be like i don't know it, it's still like i don't think anyone would run like hazard clearing it's just too much commit and a commitment for like your slot move slots like there's just yeah. not enough slots games are too game. short yep yeah. so you're just swapping a lot you know yeah uh I, if we want to just talk about cleaver a little bit more the x scissor being the same power as close combat that's kind of crazy no 100 percent. i think that honestly too the biggest thing that really factors in is just how you get that sharpness boost on like x scissor you're doing so much damage and then that paired with stone axe is just incredibly good and then on top of that you also have like you can run like any other coverage move like it has actually a pretty wide coverage pool that you yeah. can take advantage of like it gets close combat too yeah did you know that aerial ace is sharpness boosted i actually did not know that but i guess yeah. it kind of makes sense because like you see a slashing animation anyways yeah so like this thing has like the most sharpness moves of any pokemon if it had sacred sword it'd be like cracked but like it doesn't need it because it's got cc but yeah no like honestly like cleaver you could like drop night slash and run like you could run like sash sword stance to be honest and it's actually like a really scary pokemon uh i was I low key hoping it would get accelerac but i think that would have been a little much it might have been a little too good, right? Because yeah. I think the main thing too is like if you want the sword dance and you want the you know stone axe, you want the like damage, you actually you'd be doing quite a bunch of damage. So I I, I actually don't mind that at all, especially too as a decent speed tier and it lets you like commit more to into speed where you could just sword dance anyways. That's pretty yeah. solid. And it also makes it so like it, it, all right, like the the uh like the stone axe, right? It's a resisted move on like chomp and golden go. But if you SD up, like, it doesn't matter at that point. You're going to be two-shotting them. Like, it's it's a crazy attack and off of, like, 130. So I think that, like, if any of these Pokemon end up seeing usage, it's going to end up being Cleaver. And maybe Samurott a little bit just because it's, like, a decent mon overall. And this 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 gen's craving water types, bro. Like, I, 
I feel like I struggle to find a good water type that isn't Azu Dozo or like uh, Gyarados Rotom Wash. Like every other water type feels so mid to me. And even yeah, that, like I don't even like running Gyarados. I think Gyarados is kind of bad. Dude, I mean, you're seeing Dreadnought have some placements at tournaments, bro. That's how you know it's getting desperate. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, Kabu Tops 2 is getting placements right now. By the way, if you you think that's a joke, but like straight up, like look at these stats. They made these two Pokemon and they're like almost no different. Yeah, they actually are very similar. Well, Kabu Tops has like better defense, but then like way worse HP. So it's yeah. like... And then this one's got like... It's it's bulkier, but also Kabu Tops is like faster. It's it's weird. Like if Kabutops was in this gen, I think Dreadnought would see no usage, which is funny because Kabutops would outclass something for once. Yeah, I just think honestly too. Like the biggest thing is that with, with like any of the water types in this format, it's always like some kind of opportunity cost. The one water type Pokemon I think that's like really good, but also like really tough to use is Palafin. I think Palafin is like probably the best water type in this gen it's just that people like it's really tough to find a way to use it i don't yeah. know if like the pelipper route is always going to be the correct way to use it or at least like the way it's being run with pelipper yeah. right now i don't think you ever run it with pelipper if you want to have it be like consistent for tours i think you actually just like splash it on a team as like an alternate to like a gyarados i mean its stats are broken dude its stats it are really broken like, like... Jet, jet punch is stupid bro like I, everything it's too... all right that's a whole different thing i think <laughs> i think we're like good talking <laughs> about hazards uh yeah, yeah, no. yeah but yeah no i that's that's whenever we like we get on like a, a topic like this like joe and i will talk forever because we have completely different opinions about everything but like agree on everything at the same time it's really weird uh yeah but yeah you just no. gotta have me on here for more discussions man you know what i'm saying yeah it's yeah easy. i mean i gotta yeah. look if you want to do the next one too and you still got 20 minutes i can record it too it helps me out because i gotta record some vids but that's gonna be it for today guys uh you know joe's link's gonna be down below uh, if you guys want to argue about how to pronounce uh, Nihiligo, that will help me out in the algorithm. You can comment Yo, down below. Way. Yeah, Nihiligo. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, Joe's link down in the description. Nihiligo is down in the comments. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next vid. Bye.